for coming. Welcome back to our uh, monthly Net Impact luncheon meeting. Um, today we're very honored to have with us Kim Saran <laughs> from Ampon Foods uh, Processing, which is uh, a very big uh, food uh, uh, food produ producing company in Thailand. And you've probably seen the commercials on TV for some of the products actually like Chao Kok, right? Um, all over the world actually. And um, uh, today, Queen um, Kunsan will be talking about how sustainability is integrated in, in the entire company, um, environmentally, economically, and, and socially. And um, without further ado, Kunsan uh, has an MBA in marketing from National University San Jose and Bachelor of Arts uh, in Economics from the University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce. So please give him a round of applause and welcome. Thank you. Hope that everybody hear me. Okay. Thank you for a really kind for Kung Pat that uh, give us really huge introductions. We are just actually a small company on the food, mainly focused on their coconut milk under the name Chow Dog. We are have the thousand employees, sales around the two three billions baht per year, and we got a um, more certificate in order to do export. And these are the example of all brands, like the white Thai coconut milk, um, chaga, coconut waters, and we're also concerned about the healthy products like uh, the Good Life, uh, less so, which is uh, give you less sodium, uh, less sweet, but you can eat the same, eat the same amount. Um, these are the visions and missions that I can go through really fast. You can find out information from our website, amplitude.com as well. These are the main call values and our core competency that we love to do the learning organizations, share the knowledge, work as a teamwork, and also care about the society and environments. We got the responsibility that we produce the products. Our products, the coconut milk, putting the Tecapac UST, we send it out, right? About 200 million per year domestically. So it's really mean that our company create the waste. What do we have to do? So we think about that, about the recycling and do the projects about the products that we already sold into the market, which you can see at the end of the, the slide presentations. These are the, the main thing of our strategy. We try to be like a product innovations, process innovations to give the consumer right product, solve their problem, give them convenience. Also, we need to consider about the cost, how to make our cost of the productions productive and quality as well. Also, we focus on the brand value. What are we trying to do? We try to, that's just really the message that we sent out after the company that um, we care about the people, not just only consumer. We really care about all the staff work with us, or community surrounding as well. These are the like I think it's all the people here is really expect for that. Maybe I can skip that. That we love to be their production leadership. These are these are the really old school when you're doing coconut milk, right? You have to crack it, get to the white meat, and then. Um, shredded small pieces mixed with the coconut water and then <coughs> voila, coconut milk. That's an old school. What we do like 20 years ago, that would be the innovation, getting the UHT process, putting coconut milk into the UHT box. This is a range of the product that we are innovated. We give the scented candle, pandans, um, coconut cream, coconut light, coconut water and all. These are also part of the coconut milk, ready to cook curries. And we are concerned about the trends, the global trends. For example, uh, Easy Life, 
simple greens, consumer finance control in the market, empowered. We have to um, solve the problem with them and embrace them and then produce the products. These are the, the three things that are like a triple bottom line that we have to balance in our company. Not just only making money, not anymore today. All the customers, all the retail markets really care what you've done to the consumer. Not just only produce and sell the products anymore. What you've done for the waste, for the trash, for all the waste from the production that you sent out the factory. These are the people that are really care, especially um, in some market like a Western market, really care. What do you do with the, the people and environment that uh, we have to balance? These are the value chains that we are really concerned from the upstream to downstream. I'll focus on their, this one, raw material. We also care about their consumer at the end. That's why we try to use their quality, raw material, and organic, because people are really concerned about the health. And then get back to the R&D. Have to think about the products that also protect the consumer, get them health benefit. Production. Then we put in the um, ISO 14001 because of the help us to solve the root problem. Root problem, why we get the waste from production, why we get the emissions from the, from the factories, and we have to solve them. Also, sales and marketing do their communications, what we have done, what we have care about our consumer and our employees send it out, the message to outside the factories. And then we co-develop with the, all the dealers, retails, even the consumer. The, what we call the project's magic box. Gather all the used UST packaging. That's um, the waste, right? When you use the drinking um, coconut water in UST packaging, using coconut milk in UST. What are you doing with that? With the use, you throw away, right? So right now, don't need to throw away. You can't um, get that. And then, send back to the, to the retail or to us. We clean them. The used packaging, we clean them. We shred it. What we are making, we're making this and share. And then donate to the children. We also part of the what we call the CSR thinking concept, all part because we are the mainly we focus on the coconut products. All the pro, all the coconuts got to be used in our factories. And then what we are thinking that we have to use all part, the shelf, even the skin, because some product uses only the white part of the coconut meat. How about when we do the process? We get a brow skin. What we are doing with that? Actually, we can like a squid is more to get more fat. We can do with their coconut oil products or even coconut milk. But the color might be brown. The brow is contained in, um, they call it tannins, which is a really they find is really good nutritional benefit with that. Also, absolutely coconut water, coconut fiber. Long times ago, our MD. The owners talked to me about it. 20 years ago, we used a fiber, we used a huts just for the land, just the soil. But right now, we turn the waste into the value. We add a value and then turn it to the income to the factories. Okay. This is, all. This is not the animal feed. This is what I'm talking about. <coughs> Corner shelf, the husk, and then we press that, give them high densities, and then we burn it to the boiler. The boiler gives us steam, all the steam turn into electricity. Electricity, and then send it to their all facility in our factories. And this project um, made more than millions, more than um, five million baht per year. This one just return to waste and to the money. Also, their coconut shell. 
this part. We put into the classifications, actuated and get actuated carbon. Actuated carbon you will get uh, for the filter, for the water, and actuated carbon you can get like a charcoal. And then generated into the electricity. And I can tell you right now, not just only for the future, actuated carbon and charcoal from the coconut shell. That's going to be a winning product item. We can sell this one. And um, really interestingly, our main product is about the coconut milk, right? Coconut water. But added up like a two years ago and from now on to the future. All parts from the waste is going to be our new category products, which we can generate the income. And then we reduce the waste outside to the, the factory and the community. How about that? This is all the theory of the CSR concept. This is a part of it that what we're trying to do, all the projects we are not doing alone. We cannot do that. We co develop with our strategic partner, like uh, universities, Ministry of Energy, and then um, with the all staff of Ampun Food, try to create all this green factory projects, what we call the factories. Others, this one we call wood pallets, actually carbons, and then this one the biogas, which is really interesting. Um, last month, um, CNBC from Africa came to our factory, and really interesting for all of this years on project that we have done for the water waste. Water waste from the from the food from the production line because we have produced the food right we have to use the water to clean up and other things. And this waste. With treatment. I think I can show you. Yeah. With treatment and then we get a water uh, recycle system and use this water in our factories. The thing is, we can produce a biogas from this waste water. Biogas, we get we, we get a gas engine and get into the electricity. And during we, we get away from one of that. During the process of the gas engine, they get like a the heat energy during this kind of process. So it's a waste, right? So we get an absorption shield to get the cold water as well. So zero waste. This is what our target is. Try to be at least least really least waste from any production from the products from the raw materials. Okay, and we also think about the food waste as well. <coughs> food from the cafeterias, what the food that we have eat here in our factories. We into this one. This one co-develop with the uh, Ministry of the Energy Talent. Then we get a biogas we get the electricity to feed all the facilities in our fa fa uh, factories. And then, during the process of making coconut milk or any other products, when we clean up the process, our um, CIP process, we get the oil. So we treatment and we also get the oil. This one, we also sell this this one, this oil. Um, all the weeks, people will come and buy it, and it's one generated income. More than 10 million baht per year. Just, what's that? Um, they're biodiesel. And it's a food spray. So with this kind of concept, that we try to balance economy, socials, environments with all these concepts under the roof of the innovations, technologies. We use the technology and innovations to help us get more creativity and then get the hands to do things to <coughs> what can we do with the corner shelf? These are the innovative ideas that we have to put in there. 
that we can get high densities and then burn into the boiler and then feed the energy to the factories. And we have to get the right technology as well. But beyond that, everybody can do, right? The thing is about the culture, though. We try to give them to our uncontrolled staff that creativities, work as a teamwork, care about their consumer, care about our community, care about our people. That's the mindset that uh, we put in our people, that we should really think about this one and then we generate all this kind of their benefit. So right now, now today, um, please tell me if I'm wrong, many people think about CSR as a donation charities, which is um, from, um, we are doing a standard like a ISO 20, 26,000. Just only one part. Just only one part, which is this one. What we call like an after process. We do all the things and then we donate to get a participation. But internal process of all the CSR <coughs> that we have our people, have all the stakeholders, have our people how they're living, that they get a good salary enough, uh, not just only the worker, but the parents, the kids. How about them? Do they get enough money to raise the children or not? That all the things that are we concerned as a CSR as well. And also about the environment. Did we do something bad with our community, that we send out a lot of their waste, the product, to our community. We think about that as well. These are like a happy workplace. Um, support them, their happy body. We have a uh, spot day to our community in the factories um, every single month, who's like a birthday. So we gather and have the birthday together. Um, also Songkran Festival, New Year Festival, um, where they have the ceremony, like their just monthly days that we invite um, the their mother of our staff and then try our events for the monthly days. This is why I'm talking about the magic box. We gather all the used packages, clean it up, shred it, this one shred it into little pieces, press it, get the recycle, recycle board to produce this and share it. And then we together, and together with a partner, with a school, with a dealer, with the retails, with the, even the bank of, donate all those kind of the debt and share kits. I believe that 10,000 sets already that we have donated in, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And we try to do this thing more and more for international mm -hmm. market as well. A lot of people, consumer really concerned about what we've done for a product as well, that on USG packaging, all the waste cannot be recycled. But we can use all the USG packaging, produce like a, the call us POP shelf that they can put the products there when they um, at the cashier so they use the this kind of the packaging this kind of material and build the furniture that's what we are going to do for the international market to support the people as well because we also helping um, have the lunch with the other rural area for the kids we also think about the farm as well Three years ago, I got the coconut shortage um, from the drought and the big things from the from the bug. We got to educate our farmer. Don't use the pesticides. Don't use the chemical during the process of getting out the bug. But use the bug, kill the bug, just like organic ways of doing. And also, um, this flooding we also affected these our factories. You, you may see that surround with this Nakamatoma area, surrounded by the water, 1.5 meters. Before, before flooding to our factory, we also donated all of the products 
Chunar, like Ayutthaya, Pachumchani province. And when it came to the to the Nakamoto be a surprise. But the thing is, the only good thing when you're helping people, when you donate the other products to the people, when we were there, we see how the people protect their factories. And then we've learned and we build how how do we like protect the water from the factories? And more than that, our staff, more than 500 people, staying in our factories during this time. Because most of them live around this area. So we build a camp, and our staff to live in our factories help each other and it help us to protect our factories. So that's why we are survived from the, from the flooding like two years ago. Beyond that, beyond the innovative idea, innovative products, CSR, CSR is a good thing, right? And then it's come to the um, competitive with the, any other competitors. If we are not improved all the time, continual improvement, so we are not sustainable growing. If you like to sustainable growing, balancing the economy, social environment, we gotta improve all the time. That is the the daily cycle that I'm keeping in our mind that we need to improve, improve, improve. We can just have improvement throughout the all the many kids like Kaizen QCC. That we have done. So these are the, the concept of the Ampun Food CSR and Ampun Food Sustainability um, business project. Uh, right now, that if you have any questions, please, and I will try my best to answer all of it. And if you need more information, I can send through all of you this slide and also more information about CSR that we have done to the to community. Thank you. My name is Alex. Alex. And I work in the rice processing, uh, rice export industry. And okay. we take on very similar initiatives in our company. Okay. But um, we're, I would say, less successful than you are in terms of uh, probably some of the projects that you seem to have implemented. My question to you is um, while our senior management supports all of these type of activities, um, it's fairly difficult to get every single line supervisor and every employee to think about these things. How do you accomplish this in Whole Foods? You have a specific department that works on, let's say, the pilots as well as the biogas and blah, 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 blah. And how do you engage the employees to participate and support these type of things? Thank you for the questions. And really quick, though. Like I told you that, we've got the really, really core Get back to this because I think it's really helped. Our core value of Alpine Food, we love to do our engagement to across the, the border, I mean, the hierarchy of the um, positionings. We got the meetings every single month, I mean, the, the whole factories, to get an idea that um, what kind of new project that we have done. And we have the weekly meetings to all the management and supervisor that we are we thinking about the the consumer, the communities, um, not just only producer products. We cannot think like that anymore. And then we do a lot of the trainings every month that we're training all the system and we put all the CSR concept in our people mindset that not just only okay yeah you have to produce good products quality products but think about the people that receive the product as well it is it is products good for the body it is we we are about to create the waste it is we gonna produce the really bad thing to community is all we have to think about that that we put into the APF mindset. And if thing is wrong, they can write. They can go through their I mean the manager. 
and even the top management, seriously, seriously, top management, about the, if you see it's not a good thing, you can go directly to them, and then ask that, um, I think it's not good. And if they misunderstood something, management can explain. This is what we do to, to let aware all the people across of our um, factory understand more and more about the CSR by the training, by the communication without any any box or barrier. I hope that this will be the answer to your questions. Yes. Thank you, Alex. Hi, my name is Peter. Uh, great presentation. You talk about the triple bottom line, and it's sort of a slogan. Um, how do you actually measure the other two bottom lines? And I assume you're privately held. Or you're, a pri you're a private company. You're not a public company. Yeah, private company. So, do you, with the investment in these new projects, do, does your management accept a slightly higher return on capital than they would otherwise, at least for the initial stages because these projects probably pay for themselves in the long term, but initially you're having expenses that you wouldn't have if you just throw the stuff away. Thank you for these questions, and you know what? Um, like I tell you about the, the products, that two years, two years ago, we are thinking that actually for the products that we built, which is we really care all the socials, societies, and environments, give us their really high value products. And according to the, the capitals, you know what? Those kind of projects, I mean the green factory project, these are break even so fast. Just less than a year. Just to be honest with you, you can get profit from these kind of projects. And if there if there's some project, yes we have some. But not successful. But we still keep and doing. This is to be honest, this is a very good thing for the private company. Some products, for example, uh, yes, good life. We are not making money at all. We produce for five years. Seriously, less so, not making money. We lost for five years, but we still produce because we believe that these are healthy products. People can eat um, less sodium. The sodium right now is really concerned. You can eat the same amount of the salty, but you can get half of the sodium by all these products. So these are the, I hope that this answer to your question, Peter. Not just only two bottom lines about the, the social and environments, which is get uh, capital return so fast, profit real fast. And also with the first one, the e economy, the money from the real products. Some not making money, but we got to produce. Because we got a strong mind that this one would help people. And believe me, next five years, this is going to turn. People who really care about the health products, Right now we sell this one very less in domestic. But surprisingly, last year market for these products grow rapidly for international market. So according to the private company that we get the really strong price for this one. If we are public company, this project flop. Right? But um because private company and the owner really really focus and really believe believe that these products and those concepts for the society and environment will help people in the future for domestic and international. Thank you. My name is Ivo. I'm wondering about uh, the key motivators to go this far in CSR. Was it, for example, you to convince your board of management, or was it the investors, or maybe your board of investors uh, management was already interested? And maybe also for the other gentleman who's also interested. Okay. First, came from the board of the director. <coughs> board of the director got a really strong policy uh, that 
you're going to be a creator, produce a Thai food, but to serve the whole world as a kitchen. But don't forget, we got the responsibilities and societies. These are the visions that our management gives it to all their staff. If we do some projects, something that will help people, help social, self help environments, even if it's not get the return back in the short term, but we foresee in the future, that's going to help. So we keep doing that. We, we still keep pushing. Um, yeah, at the beginning, to be honest with you, we get a lot of the, the not like a negative feedback. That of why, why we have to care about this? Why we have to think about this? I just, I just working. So yeah, we need to care. But we get them the reason that the impact though. If you see the bad products, <laughs> not care about the environment, or not care about the people at all. And then community, and then your children, your parents, and then get back to the factory, to the company as well, that we are, we are bad company, and then we, our products cannot sell. So these are the, like the chains to get back. Try to explain to them. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Great presentation. That's really interesting to see how integrated your CSR is. So that's that's really uh, great. Uh, I'm just I just have a question. I have many questions, but one more important than the others is about the your supply chain and how you deal with your farmers. Uh, I saw, I saw also on your website that you had to deal with a bug and some uh, farming production uh, issue. Um, how do you have you ever think about uh, getting other kind of certification, uh, especially organic ones? Uh, and why yes or why not? And uh, is that something that will help you uh, export uh, and add some value to some of your product? Thank you for the questions. Um, get back to the raw material that we get from the our contract farmers, like thirty years. 40 years, even our company up for just 25 years, but our board of directors uh, has uh, three factories. The first one we call TCC, Table Point Coconut Company, and then which is produced coconut milk chocolate in can. And then the map provide which is produced uh, curry paste and apple food. We are dealing with uh, our contract from the for 40 years. And during the day, get back for that three years that we have the bug problem. At the beginning, they're doing the use of chemical to kill the bug. And <coughs> it solved just certain areas. But it has solved all the problems. We co developed with the KSSI universities. How can we solve this problem organically and chemical free? That's why we use the bug. And we really, really concerned about organic, certified organics, USDA, um, Canada Organics, um, Euro, iPhone, and all. That's why we just set up the land last year, get the coconut plantations, or the organic. And then that, that organic products can help us a lot of export. A lot of my guys are already waiting for uh, the organic coconut products. We can make in organic coconut oil, coconut water, coconut milk. My guys are already there. And the reason that we cannot doing the cannot doing about the organic with the farmer right now is there are some regulations that soil that they use for the coconut plantations have to be chemical free for five years. Coconut, um, maybe some people have like the questions. Is coconut used a chemical? Actually, no. Coconut is really, really high, right? Can I put the pesticides? But um, for the coconut farmer and plantations, they're doing others as well. For example, 
rishis, um, mangoes, some pineapple, and they use the chemical pesticide for that. That is the reason that um, we have to give a lot of information, uh, a lot of the benefit to our contract family that you can keep doing that, but not for the long term. If you're looking for it for the long term, please stick to the organic things. And we can we can help our farmer use an organic way to treat and and plan the products, even the coconut, even the pineapple, the mangoes, and then we get a very good market for long term as well. We concern that and we can and we are doing our our own as well. Okay, thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah, four hours. <laughs> yes. Sorry, uh, I'm Michael. Uh, it's a very nice presentation. There's, uh, uh, there's actually quite a few things I want to talk to you in, right. in, in more detail about later. But, um, but I think those kind of questions are probably for everybody to hear. Mm -hmm. um, but just to go to a, an overview, in terms of your CSR implementation, how do you see that you compare uh, with other companies in the food industry in Thailand, in Thailand generally, and then comparatively with uh, other food manufacturers internationally? Where do you see that you're sitting in terms of uh, best practice? Mm, thank you for the question. We, we are... How can I put this way? Uh, we are not compare with the competitors or any other food producer though. We are, has a goal for the CSR that who do we concern about? To put it this way, we concern about the, our customer. We concern about community. We concern about our people. And then we build a road to reach the goal. We are, um, sorry we are not like a compare them and then try to beat them, no, not like that. Um, we, we see that um, we're going to get the benefit. Oh, I, I wasn't, sorry, I wasn't meaning it in a competitive sense, but just oh. that our other, I, I just want to, I'm not familiar with the food industry. Uh -huh. So I, I want to know if, if other companies are doing similar things or if, if you're the only ones that are doing it. As far as you know, or oh, some I, just, I just spent it like that. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry about Sorry. some some food company are doing about the CSR. Absolutely, many company doing about their um, donuts, but um, some is really good doing about their helping kids, educate people, and some for international market a lot helping their community and. You know, to answer your question, we consider ourselves as the, like a, not the top though, like a medium company who are sitting doing the CSR things. Yes. But we are hoping that we are going to be like at the first line or really, really first company who are strongly building not just only CSR concept or CSR project, building the products with the CSR really concerned about the societies and uh, community and environment idea with that. This is what cool. Thank you. I'd like to thank Concern. I'd like to thank Concern very, very much. So everyone, please join me in thanking Concern for a wonderful presentation. And as a little token of appreciation, I'd like to present you with, with a little certificate. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you. 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 Prestigious guests, so that um, I hope that from our informations and data can help you understand more and more about that uh, what we care about people and stuff, and you will understand more about I believe that you already knew that about the CSR things, and hope that today you get a really good productive 
from my side. Thank you so much. Just a few announcements. Um, we really wanted to organize a trip to visit the Ampon Foods factory this month, but they're booked until January. They, they only open their factory on Wednesdays. You know, so it's like four Wednesday, four Wednesdays a month, and they're completely booked. And I've been on the phone with them for the whole month. Um, so, so we're going to try for January if you guys are coming back from the holidays. Please. Or maybe February. You know, people really interested in the, the green factory projects a lot. That's why they got them really booked in advance. And yes, and sorry about that, good prayer. No problem, Pat. But luckily, we're staying uh, under the theme of food and sustainable agriculture. So we're very lucky to be able to organize a trip to the uh, University of Chamber, no, University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce's uh, Lighting Sand Project, which is the, where they demonstrate to farmers how to do sustainable agriculture and make 100,000 baht per month from one ride, which is a quarter of an acre. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and that's out in, in Nongbori. It's very close. Actually, it's like 30 to 45 minutes. And that's next Saturday, August 24th. We're leaving from Sasin at 8.30. We have a, a van for 15 passengers. So some of us will be driving, so we can definitely carpool as well. Uh, I'll make the announcements after the van gets filled up. So first come, first serve. Let us know if you join us. It's um, it's about how long maybe at four four hundred? Four hundred three hundred fifty. Three hundred fifty if you want the van ride, including lunch and the tour, and it's two hundred if you drive yourself. Um, so yeah, so we'll be there uh, with um, Kun Adison, who who has three hats. He's the the owner of the Bang Mo uh, clothing brand, Siam Hands, uh, awesome factory, awesome business, and he's also the president of the the Intelligent Farmer Project, the Writing Side Project, and he's also the advisor to the Chamber of Commerce, and he's amazing. He's like this, you know, private sector person who's hundred percent or more involved with uh, sustainable agriculture education and, and it's it's been a very successful project there the demonstration course is five months for anyone who wants to come and learn and be convinced that you can do uh, farming without without chemicals for the long term and uh, it's it's got so much potential and we really want to share that with you so so please join us and uh, for September the net impact talk we haven't uh, confirmed a speaker yet but we'll let you know about that as well and I'll be sending out the poster about the, the trip for next Saturday probably today so thank you very much and see you next time. And one more thing? We're moving. Oh yes, we're moving. Oh yes, two more announcements. Um, we are renovating um, uh, the PhD room to be our office on the third floor. So we're just moving down and we'll be closer to the students <laughs> and the IT uh, department uh, because the fourth floor is going to become like the fifth floor. It's going to be just a bunch of rooms for, for functions and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, but it wouldn't affect you guys at all. It, 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 we might actually have some talks uh, and some workshops there for you guys. Um, one of which is actually, actually we have two coming up next year. If, if you've heard from Kunsaran today about, you know, their board's vision, their strategy, you know, the leadership that started this whole integrated, uh, you know, business um, execution of sustainability and CSR, then I, I highly recommend this, this workshop that we're organizing with the Atkinson Group from uh, Sweden and Germany in January. It's a five-day workshop uh, from Saturday to Wednesday in the middle of January. And I took it uh, last year and this year, and it's excellent, and I highly recommend it to anybody. You don't have to be a CSR uh, you know, personnel, or uh, you don't have to be this and that. You can be anybody, come from any background, and take this. Uh, Dennis and I actually took it together last year uh, with Robert Steele and uh, the gurus themselves, the, the three biggies, Alan Atkinson, Axel Kimmel, and Robert Steele will be here with us in January. And, and it's, it's just an amazing experience. And you get the tools for sustainability, for business, uh, or, or whatever you work in. It, it's a very powerful set of tools and, and um, systems thinking and, you know, a lot of creativity. Um, uh, I'm going to try to get Prince Ron to do it too. <laughs> um, and then after that, we're planning, and not confirmed yet, we're planning to have another another workshop on ethics and leadership with uh, Mary Gentili from Babson. Um, that's called Giving Voice to Values. Yeah, so so we, we have two things coming up and, and we'll make it a series. So if, if your corporates uh, are interested in, in following us, you know, on, on the series of workshops, uh, that's something that we can 
offer to you as well. So I'll be sending out um, information on these things, um, uh, you know, starting next month. And we'll have Robert still come in in October to, to talk in detail about the workshop as well. Um, and that's it. Oh, <laughs> misunderstood. So we're moving, besides the office, we're moving our Net Impact luncheon meeting to over to Sasa, um, you know, which is the hotel, the guest house and the restaurant. Um, they have the Sassin Alumni Lounge and Deepak Jane Hall, and that's where we'll be. Um, we have to upgrade our prices a little bit because it's been seven years. Um, so, so, I, so in order to get you guys all to, um, to sign up for a free membership of Net Impact, we're gonna raise the non-member price to 500 baht. <laughs> and the member price for, for the lunch will be 300. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and maybe we can get some, some chow, chow ka or, or the products from, from, from Foods <laughs> sometimes too. Yeah, so yeah. So please go to netimpact.org uh, if you haven't done so already. It takes literally one to two minutes to sign up for the free membership and it's a great network. Um, actually, where you went to school, I'm going there, San Jose, I'm going to the, the big Net Impact uh, conference in October. If anyone would like to join me, it's a three-day thing, and, um, and Nick has been there, and he really wants me to see it. I have no idea what it's about, but it seems really cool. So, <laughs> yes? I've done, I've done three or four yeah. workshops as well in the past five years, and I just would, like, highly recommend them. Uh, yes. In terms of sustainability thinking and practice Yeah, it's really unique, and, and anyone can use it. It's very, very useful. Yeah, you can use it immediately, and we use it all the time in our MBA. Actually, our students can tell you about it. Um, we kind of rush them through it in one day, but uh, it's it's really should be like a three to five day thing, and it's it's really, really, um, really, really useful. So yeah, so we'll we'll be giving you the marketing on that um, until then for the next few months. So thank you very much, and, and see you next time, and see you next Saturday.